Welcome everyone. So today we are, uh, our session today is instructional coaching and the role of leaders. You hungry? And as we, and today we are going to dive in. Ashley and I are here to support and I would love to just go to the next slide and just introduce ourselves. So my name is Carenza Harris. Um, I've been in education for the past 20 years and it gives me great joy to always work with the little ones. Um, but more importantly, to provide the tools of science of language and literacy in every adult that's involved with those children. Um, and one thing that I love to do absolutely love is to spend time watching movies with my 91 year old grandmother because she just talks throughout the entire movie and you, you it's a it's a joy um Ashley <laughs> go right ahead yes okay my name is Ashley Montgomery I'm a lead instructional coach for the Rollins Center of Language and Literacy I've been in education for about 14 years now and just like Carenza I really love working with the little ones but also working with adults. Um, and I'm very passionate about educational equity. Um, I believe that all children deserve to have equal access to resource and quality education um, so that they can thrive within our society. And in my free time, I love to travel and to spend time outdoors with my family. Great. Thanks, Ashley. So we want to know who you are on our call today. On our next slide, we are asking to get to know you. Um, you will see a webinar poll pop up shortly. But in the meantime, if you will grab your phones, we want to have a little bit of fun with you and just scan the QR code on the screen and answer the two questions that come up on your poll. Those questions should be, where are you joining us from today? And also, what do you love to do? Great. I see many of you are already taking the poll also. See a lot of Cox Campus members already, so that's wonderful. Yes. Great. Hey, if you can, for the sake of the call, um, if we can always all mute ourselves on the call, however, just mute yourself temporarily because we are definitely action packed and we really want to hear your voices. And during that time that you do want to share with us, we ask that you just use the reaction sign at the bottom of the Zoom call um, and just raise your hand and we'll be more than and unmute yourself and, and we will be. We would love to hear from you on our call today. All right. We have a few more people doing the poll. Yep. Ashley, do we have? Yeah. Wow. We've got some people here in Atlanta. We have. Yeah. So if you've already scanned the QR code, um, you, we're going to also drop a link to the Padlet in the chat. If you do not have any access to your camera on your phone, no worries. Um, we're gonna drop that link to the Padlet in the chat and you can just click on that link and add your information by clicking the little plus, the pink plus sign on the bottom right. Um, and you can add your information and then we'll go ahead and show the screen um, for the Padlet so we can see everyone pop up. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, we have some people. In some more, yes. Um, from all over Alabama. See, I think that's Florida. Is that South Carolina? Yeah. Oh, so. Char yep. North Carolina. Atlanta. More Alabama. We have some up north. Yes, Concord, North Carolina. Welcome, just outside of Charlotte. Thanks, Trisha. Yes, yep. if you can't figure out that Padlet, 
We just wanted to have a little fun with you guys and try something different, but more than welcome to just put it in the chat. Great to have you with us, Crystal from Oregon. Thank you. All right. Well, let's talk about our goals for today. Why are we here today? Well, if we go to our next slide. So as we come together, we just want to, our goal for today is for us to gain an understanding of the importance and benefits of instructional coaching. So today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in discussing like the entire ecosystem approach and also dive deeper into how we can support coaching efforts at our site. As we go to our next slide. Okay. So we want to just get a feel for the room. So before we get started, we want to know how are you feeling today? We hope everyone is having a wonderful day. We know it's Tuesday. We started um, the week. And so we just hope that you're off to a great start. So if you could either use the reactions button at the um, down below on Zoom, or you can drop an emoji um, if you have access on your phone, or you can just describe one or put in one word in the chat of how you're feeling today. We just want to get a pulse check in the room to see if we're feeling great and good. And hopefully we can put you all in a better mood if you're not. <laughs> well, it's the start of school for many of us in the South. Now, those of you that are up North, you get to enjoy a little bit more time. Yeah. Yeah. I see some overwhelm, which is very understandable. Like we said, yes. just the beginning of school. I see heart, uh, star eyes. Yes, feeling great. Just needing to find a balance. I can relate, Alicia. Oh, no, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, hope you feel better. Yes. Hope you definitely feel better soon. Okay, well. Thank you all so much for sharing your feelings with us today. Again, uh, Karenza and I are so happy to be with you all, and we look forward to a wonderful session with you all. Yes. So next, we will go into our inquiry question. So we want to be very intentional today about how we go into our session, and we would like for you to think about these inquiry questions um, before we dive in today's content. Uh, Keep in mind that these questions are just for you. You can feel free to share in the chat if you want to, but this is just for you because we recognize that each learner is different and every learner may want to gain something different from our session today. So we wanna take about two minutes to think about and answer the following questions. Um, what is a question you hope to have answered by the end of the session today? And Think about what will shift for you as a leader um, if you answered this question. So you can write these um, answers down on your notes, um, whatever you have um, to jot down notes for today, or you can just keep these questions and thoughts in your mind as we move through the presentation today. And so I'll set my timer here beside me for two minutes, and then I will let you know once we are at the 60 second mark. Um, just to be wrapping up your thoughts, and then we can come back together and continue our session for today. So I'll go ahead and start the timer right now for two minutes, just to be thinking about these questions. Okay, that is our time. Well, we want to thank you for thinking those inquiry questions through. We are going to have an opportunity to come back to these questions um, at the end of our session today. So I will go to pass it over to Carenza so she can start us off with the content today. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, so why are we here today? And why is our work so critical? Why is this work so critical? We can go to the next slide. Are we on the next slide? We can go back to the why is the work so critical slide. Okay, great, thank you. So as we take a moment to look at this graph, um, as you can see, statistics show that only 34% of our country's children read on grade level by the fourth grade. Thank you, Toki. 
This means 66% of our children do not read proficiently. And unfortunately, they are, unlike, they are likely to grow up with limited education and with a little hope of leading a choice-filled life. Unfortunately, also, the majority of the 66% are disadvantaged and minority children. This is a true public health crisis that is affecting our communities. So where do we come in? Science tells us that our brains are not wired for reading and that they must be built. Um, this construction and the preparation of the brain begins early. So that's where we come in. We lay that foundation for language and preparing the brain for reading. Let's go to the next slide and just talk about why instructional coaching is so important. Research shows that instructional coaching is effective in improving teachers' practices and ultimately it improves child outcomes more so than any other professional developmental approaches, which we will discuss in a second. It focuses more on building the will and the skill and knowledge, and it addresses the behaviors and the values and emotions of the person being coached. And most importantly, it views them as a partner. Um, let's take a moment quickly to hear from Steve. He's a, Steve is the executive director of an early education center, and he's going to just give you his perspective as his um, personal experiences about the effectiveness of instructional coaching at his site. If we can play this video. Let's listen to Steve, who is the executive director of an early education center, as he talks about his personal impressions and experiences with effective instructional coaching at his site. I've seen a, a number of our centers where, uh, and one in particular I'm thinking about having witnessed it firsthand, uh, where a teacher um, established that relationship with that instructional coach. And early on, it was very... It was a little rocky simply because it was really pushing and stretching the teacher to be thoughtful about, you know, what it is that she's doing with the kids and being very intentional. But once that teacher got hold to it, she really took it and ran. And we saw such a change in the ecosystem of the classroom, uh, not only just with her, but with her co-teacher and even how the, the students responded to the, the story reads and how we saw more questions coming from the kids. And I'm talking about a a taller age group of kids. So, they, you know, they're really starting to develop and to see them now as, as three-year-olds that are thoughtful, that have language that they're constantly building on, and they're not afraid to express themselves in the classrooms and families have noticed the growth. It, it's, it's just a, a great thing to see. Great. Thank you so very much. So as we heard from Steve, he mentions quite a few ways that he has observed the changes of instructional coaching at his site, specifically even around that three-year-old who is more expressive and thoughtful. Um, I would like to take a moment, we definitely want this to be an interaction with all of us on this call, just to ask, um, what are some positive changes that you have seen at your site? Or if you have been coached, if you're a teacher on the call today, if you've been coached, how has instructional coaching impacted you? So I would love to open up the floor. Please unmute yourself um, and share your experiences of what you see as a positive change that's happened at your site. And you can also um, type your response in the chat, either work, but we definitely would love to hear from you. Don't be shy. Yes, please don't. We're all friends here. <laughs> Love it. Cassandra says, teachers feeling renewed when you come in with a new science-backed approach. Thank you for sharing that, Cassandra. Definitely. Um, it has made me more intentional. It does. It, it, I, I do agree, Angela. It does make us more intentional in our, in our approach, it, even if you're coming from a teacher's perspective. Um, it does, you know, you, you have a goal, you have, uh, you're being supported. 
And we're going to talk about some of those things and how we support in our call today. Um, a couple other things. When you build positive relationships, teachers are more receptive to learning. Absolutely. I completely 100% agree. We've talked about that in our past year-long journeys about how important it is to build those trusting relationships um, with teachers and those that you work with, um, especially for the buy-in. Um, let's see. And of course, when you are open to modeling what you want people to do, yes, yes, yes. Kern is going to talk a lot about the modeling part when we go into the coaching cycle. Um, teachers are more reflective in their practice, build relationships with a supportive adult. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And just one last thought as an educator, it feels great to collaborate and support each other. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Definitely. I see a lot around the relationship building too with a supportive adult and definitely trust plays a huge part in that um, and building that relationship. And we will talk about that. Um, okay. Thank you so much for, for your responses. Let's move on to our next slide. Okay, so let's talk about the different approaches of coaching. And, and as we see here on this slide, um, I'm sorry, hold on just a second here. As we see here on this slide, um, on the right hand, on the left hand side, you do see mentoring. Um, these are the different approaches to coaching. And with mentoring, it focuses more on the development of specific individuals, not so much on a goal or the children's outcome or thinking even in a bigger picture of an ecosystem. And if you look over to the right, you see technical assistance. This is important, of course, because this is centered around a specific component. This could be possibly um, helping a teacher fill out her NACI forms or attendance, things of that nature. But if you notice here in that balance in the middle is our coaching. Um, it sits in the middle of the continuum and may sometimes include both aspects of your mentoring and also of your technical assistance. Um, coaching focuses on personal ecosystem and the child outcomes. And coaching is a partnership approach. Many of you mentioned that even in your responses that it takes the two of you. It's a supportive collaboration of the two of you. And it's designed to develop and improve the skills and practices of that teacher um, to of course achieve the outcomes for the children. So right now we're gonna go deeper into the ecosystem and I'm gonna pass this over to Ashley, if we can go to our next slide. Yes, thank you, Krenza. Mm -hmm. So um, in our work, we take an ecosystem approach. Um, this visual is just to show how impactful everyone's role is in the development and growth of a child and how many factors can contribute to a child's success. So in the ecosystem approach, everyone has a role to play. That's directors, teachers, family support specialists, other support staff, families, and instructional coaches. We all contribute to the ecosystem construction. And so everyone works together to create the optimal conditions that support children's learning. So everyone must be on the same page about where they are, um, where we want to be and what it will take to get there as a site as a whole. So let's take a look at our next slide that talks about the ecosystem elements for an ecosystem. So within this ecosystem, we've identified nine essential elements that are broken down into clusters in which we call the three C's. So that's climate, content, and connections. So all nine of the elements that you see here are based on what research tells us about how children learn and develop. And these elements also represent practices and conditions that respond to the social, emotional, and learning needs of young children that must be present for language and literacy to develop. And all of these elements are connected and there are some overlap between many of the elements. Okay, in our next slide. So in order to prioritize um, these areas for coaching, 
all co-constructors will need to know where the site is on each of the nine essential elements. And we do this by working together. Um, and then we need to know how the construction is coming along. So our ecosystem construction measure, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop a link in the chat for the actual measure. And we actually have this on Cox campus as well. So let me copy it here. Or Shantae, if you don't mind, if you could drop that link for me to the ecosystem construction measure, and that's just for you all to have as a reference. Um, so our ecosystem construction measure is a tool that serves to guide facilitators, instructional coaches, site directors, and other center staff to assess and monitor at a, the site level development of the essential ecosystem elements that we mentioned in the previous slide. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that the ecosystem measure is not designed to be um, for a, used for evaluative purposes. Um, instead, it's intended to facilitate the focused um, observation of practices related to um, the elements, support reflection, ongoing dialogue, and shared feedback on the status of each element, and identify priority areas for improvement goal selection and action planning that further support the ecosystem construction and growth at the site. So something just to ponder as we move along in the presentation, um, as a leader, just be thinking about how will you utilize this ecosystem construction measure in collaboration with your coach or teachers to ensure your site is centered around children's language and literacy development. Um, in our next slide, we will have an opportunity to hear from a director around how they utilize this tool. Okay, so we're going to take a moment to hear from a director's perspective and about how she feels around the ecosystem and how it's been a beneficial tool to help guide and monitor progress of goals at her site. So we'll watch the video and I just want you to be thinking about how your site could utilize this con ecosystem construction measure tool and how it could be beneficial at your site. So let's take a look. The ECM. When I first started using the ecosystem construction measure, I had no idea how eye-opening it was going to be. When I think about our site and how our children are doing, I've always been so proud of where we are and the direction we're moving. But there's always something we could be working on and trying to improve. And the ECM helps us to do that. It's like a beacon showing us what actions need to be taken in order to see improved child outcomes at our site. It was kind of like changing the lens on how I viewed the situation. I've always taken time to visit the classrooms at my site and speak directly with the teachers. But when doing so with the ECM, my focus was directed to the nine ecosystem elements and how they came together to support early childhood learning. Beyond that, I was also able to see the current state of those elements at our site, and that's what made the difference. During my observations, I was pleased to see that we were excelling in most areas of the ecosystem. But even though we were doing so well in many ways, the ECM did give me some insight as to which areas still have room for growth and where we need to focus our attention in order to better support our children. I actually think this is an exciting place for us to be because now we recognize the areas where we are really strong as well as where we have some work to do. And that means we can start taking action and building in those areas to improve outcomes for our children. And that's really what it's always been about. Okay, so as you heard from Tammy, she utilizes the ecosystem measure as a tool to help strengthen areas of growth and to monitor progress along the way, which helps her stay focused on the goals at her site. So we wanna hear from you. So think about your site. How do you see the ecosystem construction measure being beneficial to your site? So you can feel free to come off mute or add your comments in the chat. How do you feel this tool can be useful? I just want to ask, has anyone had the opportunity to use this tool before? I guess we can start from there. 
Um, but if you haven't, and from what Ashley was going through, how could you see that being beneficial? But just out of curiosity, has anyone had the opportunity to use the tool on Cox campus? I see, I think it's useful to create a shared and focused goal. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ellen. Not yet. So I do encourage you, um, all of these great resources that we have, we are dropping the links in there. And then at the end, we'll also show you um, how you can get on Cox campus and where our courses in order to, you know, locate where, where all of these great resources are. Thank you so much, Mary. Sounds interesting. It is interesting. <laughs> it's a <Very> great <laughs> It's a great way, like we said, just to uplift that comment, really uh, share goals, um, to monitor the progress of the site, um, just a great tool to use. And I also see someone said, I think it's helpful to use to be reflective. Uh-oh, it went away. <laughs> it went away so fast. Uh, let me scroll back up. So we have some comments coming in. Okay, to be reflective and establish primary areas to focus on. I like that it allows for noting strengths. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. We can go to the next slide and discuss um, our process of goal setting. So why do we go through the process of rating the ecosystem and determining goals? So our answer is overall, you know, our overall focus and all that we do to create a language rich environment is for the children and for their growth and outcomes in language and literacy development. Um, so after the site's ecosystem is rated, which you will use that ecosystem construction measure that we just shared to rate your sites, priority goals for the sites will be identified based on those nine essential elements that we discussed. Um, and that's in the green, so the site will create goals. And then based on those priority goals and the needs of the children in each of the classroom, teachers will also have goals. They will set those classroom goals in blue that, will, that they will focus on throughout the year. Um, and to set those classroom goals, teachers and the coach um, will work closely together um, in using the expected child outcome document. And that's also a tool that can be found in the resource library on Cox campus. Um, so that is a document where teachers will use to show um, developmental growth by age. Um, and then keep in mind that all of these um, areas and goals can be changed based on site improvement and data that will be collected along the way. And so now I'm going to pass it over to Carenza so we can talk more about the coaching cycle. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, so very briefly, I would just love to share with you the Rollins coaching cycle. Um, if we can go to the next slide. And the initial phase here, in this phase, we begin with the coaching cycle at the initial conversation. During this phase, the coach and the teacher will begin building relationships and building those connections, which many of you highlighted earlier, that that is such an important part of coaching. They'll establish roles, responsibilities, even expectations for how the coaching process will unfold. And then we move to the identify phase. In this phase, you'll have an opportunity to goal, set goals, um, conversations around what you've seen in the classrooms, and also thinking about the ecosystem priority areas. Then in the explain, explain phase of the impact cycle, this is the phase where we use to clarify and expand upon the knowledge that's gained from taking our Cox Campus courses, more so around the content and making sure that teacher has a great understanding of the why behind the work. And then my favorite um, phase is the modeling phase. This is the action phase. Um, this is where the coach has the opportunity to demonstrate the new practices and the implementation of it. And of course, this always goes before the guided phase. The guided practice is where the teacher gets the opportunity to um, implement those practices in the classroom. And then we move to the observe. I, I'm sorry, before I go to that, 
the modeling and guided, we use the terminology, the I do, we do, you do, because it is just that I'm doing it, then we're doing it together. And then your teacher gets an opportunity to do it for themselves. And then the observe phase, that's where your teacher is able to do it without any assistance or guidance from the coach. And the coach will again take notes and, and take notes of the strengths and things that may need to be improved upon. In the improved phase, that's when we're deep, we have a debrief conversation and talk around the things that may need to um, be worked on and also celebrate the successes in there. And realizing that at this time, we will reflect back on the goals that were set and see if we do see those child outcomes taking place. And if not, sometimes we will see where we may have to go back through the coaching cycle and repeat some of those phases. Um, but if not, if everything's great, then we're able to set another goal at that point. So let's ju just go ahead and dive in. If we can go to our next slide. Are there any questions so far? I don't want to. I feel as though I'm talking, but definitely if you have any questions, please feel free to put that in the chat for us and we'll be more than happy to answer that. So now for the, dive, the deeper dive, how do we support as a leader, as yourself, how are you setting the stage? As we dive into setting the stage, something critical for you to keep in mind is that the success and the effectiveness of a coach is directly tied to how well they are being supported by you. And I repeat that again, how well they're being supported by you. What do I mean by this? As a leader, it's so important to ensure that the readiness of your site is already there. A crucial part of preparing your site is Cox Campus. Cox Campus's content is the foundation for creating a language sensor ecosystem for our children to thrive. So leadership should prioritize that content and protect the time for the teachers and staff um, to take the necessary Cox Campus courses. And another important element to consider is the culture at your site. As a leader, you should pro promote a data-driven culture that focuses on the path of each child. And the site culture should also promote, again, once you've, you've already lifted this up, the collaboration and the teamwork. A good way to foster a collaborative culture is to protect that time again for planning and preparation so that your teachers can also share those ideas, work together, in addition to preparing your site for, um, for coaching. It's just to provide that direct support to the coaches themselves. So in our next slide, we're gonna talk about what that direct support looks like for your coach. Um, the support, as you can see here, we have four support basics that I'm just gonna touch on. Ashley will touch on a few others. Supporting the coach. And if we can also drop in the, in the chat, the link to supporting the basics, you will see here that you, supporting the coach, you have the ability to influence how the teachers are responding to having that instructional coach at their site. So make sure that you're being enthusiastic about coaching and hopefully your teachers will also become enthusiastic about being coached also. Also making sure that we collaborate with the coach to determine those priority areas. So as we see here, we have uh, meetings also. Those meetings are definitely encouraged to have with your coach to make sure that you guys are consistently talking around the goals of the center, also being able to be a support and offer resources. Walk in the talk, it means exactly what you see here. It means that you're doing everything that you expect your teachers and your staff to do. So that once again, and you will hear us constantly say Cox Campus, that means also you taking those Cox Campus courses, um, attending professional development sessions, and also collaborating with your coach um, on ways for, for you to, um, to sorry, are all great ways for you to lead the way to walk the talk and then letting the coach coach. Of course, now we're, not, we're all privy to seeing that we have seen a shortage of staff in, in early learning. However, it can be sometimes difficult to just allow your coach to do that. And so when we say let the coach coach, we're asking that in this time, you try to avoid assigning additional roles and responsibilities to the coach. 
and really try to prioritize and protect that coach's time to maximize their effectiveness in coaching. And of course, always celebrating the successes and brainstorming possible solutions for overcoming any challenges that your coach has. So that's just lifting up four of the basic supports. And in our next slide, I wanna share with you a glance of a meeting between a director and a coach. And as we're watching this uh, brief snippet, uh, just take note of how you see Tammy, the director, supporting Diane's coaching. If we can play. Thanks for meeting with me again, Mrs. Smith. These weekly check-ins will go a long way in ensuring that you and I are on the same page about the site's ecosystem and my work as a coach. I agree, and I'm especially eager to hear about the progress you've made with our teachers. So how has it been going so far? I know you've only been with us for a short time, but has everything been going smoothly? Yes, it's all been great. And everyone here has been so friendly and receptive to the coaching. I've been getting to know your teachers a bit better, and they all seem excited to begin the coaching process. I'm so glad to hear that. This is so important to our site, and I want you to know that you have my full support in everything you're doing. If there's anything you need to make your coaching more effective, please let me know. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. I appreciate your support in ensuring children reach their language and literacy outcomes. The more involved you are as a site leader, the easier it will be for me to coach. Your enthusiasm will influence the teachers and the other staff here at the site. I'm happy to help. Is there anything I can do right now to support you? Well, yeah, yes, there is something I could use your help with. Do you remember the first site goal we set in our joint action plan? Of course, all staff will engage children in meaningful conversations throughout the day. Right, and in order to move forward with this goal, we need all teachers to take the Meaningful Conversations course on Cox campus, but not all of them have done so yet. And I know they have really packed schedules and there's a lot for them to keep up with, but in order to really understand the talk strategy and be able to implement it, taking the course is the first step. I agree completely. I'll speak about this directly in our staff meeting tomorrow morning. In fact, I'll protect some time for everyone on site to take the course, myself included. I've already taken the course once, but I'll do it again to show just how important this is to our site. That's wonderful. Everyone here plays an important role in improving the overall ecosystem, but it's your leadership that will keep everyone on the same page so we can reach our goals. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Thank you. Um, so yeah, definitely. I can see several ways that Tammy was supportive of what Diane's needs were to be an effective coach. She mentioned taking courses. She talked around uh, even bringing it up in the site, in, in the staff meeting, and definitely protecting time to, to take the course uh, for their teachers. So I wanna ask you a question. If we can go to our next slide, I, we want to hear from you and definitely like, again, please unmute yourself. We'd love to hear your voices. And you also have the option to just put a note in the chat. As a leader, how do you support your coaches? Or if you're a teacher on the call, how does your leadership support you in your role? We would just love to take a few minutes to hear from you. Please don't be shy. We would love to hear from you. Let me check the chat just to be sure. Okay. I know one thing maybe Carenza we can uplift from our personal experience with, you know, our leader, our wonderful leader, Shanika, who is on the call today. <laughs> Um, how she, you know, definitely protects time for us. Um, we have those important meetings like we just saw, like we're able to discuss um, our work, our goals. And so, you know, her just uplifting that importance of meeting time together and us being able to collaborate as a team is really helpful. Um, has anybody else had any other experiences they might want to share? I do see in the chat that Molly has said that to make sure that the staff have the time to meet with the coaches. Absolutely. Have them have that time to coach, let the coach coach, and also giving those teachers that time. 
um, we really can't invest and see those those gains and those improvements in the children's outcomes if we're not if they if your coaches are not given the opportunity to support the teachers. Kalila, thank you so much. She she supports me and us with the necessary tools and trainings that we need for our professional development. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and clearly I'm thinking with that professional development, you're saying the tools and the training. So it's one thing to offer resources, but also to have that, that guided practice throughout that. That's so important. So thank you so much for sharing that, Kalila. Yep. Uh, right ahead, Ashley. You can yep. says, I make myself available to them. Pay attention when they need to talk. That is so wonderful. Like always just being that listening, supportive ear, it can be very helpful and go a long way because teachers are going to want to open up and talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what Cassandra else. Cassandra currently have a biweekly pulse check with teachers. Mm -hmm. I love that. So important. One thing, the consistency. Mm -hmm. And then also just making sure you have that pulse check. How are things going? What is needed? How are you feeling? Um, Love that, Cassandra. Do you want to just share briefly? I don't want to put you on the spot, Cassandra, but if you would just share briefly, like what that check-ins, you know, what what is that checking? How does that sound? Yeah, I, I'll, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, great, thank you. Um, yeah, happy to share. So on top of coaching, there's a current, uh, as I said, bi-weekly pulse check with teachers. And it sounds a little bit like the questions are, what are, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, what's a win? What's a challenge? Um, and it's around constructive feedback for both of us. So one of the questions we typically ask is like, what can I do more of, less of, or differently to support you? Um, and then we talk about any students that they have or any other wonderings and things like, so it's a constant open dialogue that we're checking in, not only on a human level, um, but also as in a teacher and coach level. Um, and so that's separate from our coaching cycles where, where you were asking earlier what that looks like. We typically coach teachers around new initiatives um, and that can look different and vary from teacher to teacher, depending on their strengths and rolling out these initiatives. Thank you so much. I was writing one of those things down. What, what can we do more of? What can we do different to support you? And what's a win? I yes. Great. <laughs> yes. I love that. What's a win and what's a challenge? I love that yeah. so much. Thank you so much. Um, and definitely, I... I couldn't agree with you more. Make it sure that it's not just, it's it's personal, it's professional, it's really trying to make sure you understand how they're feeling and then also help with the actual content or those new strategies that you're actually sharing with them. So thank you so much for sharing that. If there's anyone else that's on the call that would love to share briefly with us, we would be happy to hear from you. Alicia, meeting with administrators to make sure we are on the same page with goals has been helpful. I have been working on pacing myself and my teachers to slow down and reflect before we move on to something else. So important. Like having that time to pace yourself and slow down. Have those check-ins. Are you know, how are you feeling? Are we are you feeling comfortable with this? Um, are you moving too fast? all of those things. And I couldn't agree with you more, Alicia, when you say the administrators, everybody has to be on board. And, and that's what Ashley was lifting up earlier was that ecosystem. Everyone has to be on the same page and all in order for this to, to work. Yep. Why, thank you, Kanisha. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's move on to our next slide. Thank you so much for sharing all of those things. All right, thank you everyone. Um, so we are gonna talk about more leadership support basics. Um, and so as a leader, there are many times when you will have to support your coach um, by clarifying roles, clarifying confidentiality and accountability and making coaching a priority. So you may be asking, like, what does this look like 
at my site. So, um, you know, you want to speak with teachers and staff at your site. So around clarifying roles and making sure that they understand exactly why in instructional coaching is there, the coach is there and how they will be going about their work. So you want to emphasize um, the coach's role is to provide that learning support and to facilitate implementation of new teaching practices. So they are not there to be um, evaluative or in, critical in any way. They're just there for that support around the implementation of the work. So for example, it's the beginning of the year. It's a perfect time to clarify those roles um, for the teacher and how the coach will be there to support them throughout the school year. Um, and then clarify confidentiality and accountability. Um, instructional coaching is considered confidential and teachers will always be more forthcoming with their thoughts and concerns if they know that they won't be shared by anyone other than the coach. So in the beginning, when Karenza was talking about the um, coaching cycle and she really discussed those initial conversations, you know, we really work hard in the front end to build those trusting relationships with teachers. So it's just really important that we maintain that trust throughout um, and so as a leader, you will want to keep your discussions with that coach really centered around like what you are accountable for as a leader. So that status of the ecosystem measure and progress towards child outcomes. And then um, you want to make sure that coaching is a priority at your site. So you want to do your best to facilitate the collaboration between the teachers and the coaches. You want to ensure that they have everything they need in order to be successful throughout the coaching process. Um, and you want to think about all the support basics that we shared here with you today, because bringing them all together will make sure that instructional coaching is a priority at your site. Okay. And we're going to quickly watch a video. Um, this video is with Diane and Tammy, Tammy being a director. I just want you to make note of how Tammy supports Diane, and then we can come back and discuss. Hey there, Mrs. Smith. I wanted to give you a quick update on what I've been up to today. I just finished having an Identify conversation with your pre-K teacher, Carvenza. We had a great discussion, and we set classroom level goals that are linked to the ecosystem priority areas that you and I determined for the site. Oh, great. I'm actually very curious about that. Carvenza is one of our newer teachers here. Have you noticed anything about her performance that I should be concerned about? Well, I can tell you that Carenza is a great teacher, and she's very enthusiastic about improving her teaching practices in any way she can to benefit her children. Other than that, I don't have any information regarding performance. My role is to be supportive rather than evaluative. And while I will be able to share some things with you that are key to achieving goals and improving the ecosystem elements, confidentiality is incredibly important, and it must be maintained. Got it. I certainly wouldn't want you to do or say anything that would betray the trust that you're building with our teachers. I just want to make sure everything is going well. By the way, is there anything I can do right now to support your coaching? Yes, actually there is. It would be very helpful to me if you could talk to your teachers about my role as a coach. Occasionally, teachers are hesitant to work with a coach because they feel like they're being judged, and that's never the purpose of what we do. I just want them to know that I am not an administrator. I'm not a supervisor here to do evaluations. I'm just a coach, and my role is strictly to support them in their professional development. I always make a point to emphasize this when meeting new teachers, but it would have so much more impact if you could speak with them as well. Of course, I'll speak with each teacher you're working with individually and make sure they understand your role as a coach and why this is so important to our site. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, there is one more thing. Karenza and I will be needing some instructional materials and other resources to complete the action steps we set for our joint action plan. Nothing big, just a few books and documents, but we don't currently have these resources available at the site. Not a problem. Get me a list of everything you'll need and I'll take care of it. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Your support has been such a big help and it's making my coaching so much easier and more effective. Okay. So we just wanted to highlight what does it look like to make coaching a priority at your site? As you can see, you know, Tammy really carved out that protected time for teachers to take a course. She agreed to take the course again, even though she's already taken it before, to show that she's committed to the work. 
Um, she was there to listen about resources that we need to make sure that instructional coaching was successful at the site. So we just wanted to kind of show you a glimpse of what that conversation would look like and for the director's part of making coaching a priority at their site. Okay. So our next slide, we are going to look at um, through the lens of a leadership perspective. And so we're gonna go ahead and play that and then we can open it up for discussion. And the effectiveness of the instructional coaching is contingent on the conditions of the site. So it's important that the site culture is strong. Um, you know, it embodies coaching as a partnership uh, to the coaching ecosystem. When a coach and coachee are seen as equal partners, coaching efforts will take hold and have an optimal effect. The culture is so important because we all have to be on one accord. We are an ecosystem and we're all, we all need to be striving for the same goal. And that is to increase the literacy for the children. You know, there's also gotta be a, a leadership support of coaching. So we, we just can't depend on teachers to be the end all be all. Our teachers have to be supported by leadership that is uh, collaborative with the, with the coaching efforts. Uh, they must see someone that they're uh, in collaboration with and have a clear vision of what the instructional coach is, do, is doing and how they can support their efforts. Uh, if the instructional coach doesn't have the support of the leader, then the coaching will be challenging and the leader has to work in partnership with the coach to ensure that the culture is right for coaching and establishing and prioritizing resources to include time and materials. As a teacher, I took comfort in knowing that my leader understood what I was going through with the instructional coaching process. My leader understood because my leader was going through it simultaneously, so we were learning together. So now that the leader has learned it and is able to impart and be consistent with what the instructional coaches expect, that is just a great tool and it helps all three collaborate together, the teacher, the leader, and the instructional coach. The impact uh, instructional coaches have on teachers will always be lasting uh, if the instructional coach is, isn't learning about practice while coaching. And, you know, all those you can, although these the conditions may not uh, be entirely present at a site, it's, it's critical that it exists to some degree. Uh, no center will always have everything and be perfect all the time. But uh, if one of those conditions are missing, uh, the instructional coaching will definitely be more challenging. Okay, well, we just wanted to close out with that video because I think it just gives some great perspective on site culture. So as you heard from both leaders, and they really uplifted the importance of having a strong um, site or school culture and everyone coming together. So as we close out the session today, we want to emphasize how important the conditions of the site play in the effectiveness of instructional coaching. So there must be a strong site culture that supports instructional coaching efforts. Um, sites where there are strong partnerships between coaches, teachers, and site leaders. So we are all a part of this ecosystem working together for that one goal, and that's to increase language and literacy outcomes for children. Okay. Thank you. And as we are closing out, I do see but we do have some more questions in the chat. Alina, will this be realistic? This will be awesome about all the support from the leader. And it does take work, definitely. Okay, I do see that. Shanika has responded there and kudos that you've <laughs> taken the words right out of my mouth there. So yes, thank you for your feedback. Every school does have different dynamics. Um, as we go to our last slide, we have our inquiry. We asked you earlier on, um, what is a question that you hope to have answered by the end of this session? And what will shift for you as a leader if you answer this question? We just wanna take one minute to have you ponder on that. Have you think about how can you now answer your inquiry question and what shifted for you in today's session? And of course, if you still have a question that you're pondering, feel free to put that in the chat and we 
we'll be able to look at our transcripts after. And for the sake of time, we will be able to hopefully answer those questions or even go into that in the next session that we may have. So to be continued, um, but definitely we would love to know this is something for you to have for yourself, what shifted for you in today's session. Great, thank you, Elena. The importance of building the ecosystem. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Let's see. You're welcome. All right. Let's go to our next slide and Ali Ashley will take us away. I primarily do assessments, but like to be better able to work with parents and therapists. Great, so that. All right, so we are going to have a quick poll to come up. We wanna know how did we do in this session? So we wanna know, did this session deepen your knowledge? Did this session provide you actionable ways to transform your practice immediately? Um, was the session, um, are you planning to make changes to your practice aligned with the science? And will you share this year long journey opportunity with colleagues in your network? So we just wanna hear from you. You should see a poll pop up and it's just four questions to answer. We really do appreciate everybody for participating today. Some great discussion. We definitely want to continue this conversation. Absolutely. And we did see that many of you are Cox Campus members. Um, yep. We would love for you to, if you're not a member, to create a membership today. It's 100% free and accessible um, to all of your teachers, um, staff. You will see tons of resources. Also, this course that we've referenced today, many of you may not have had an opportunity, as we saw the polls earlier, to actually want uh, uh, view the course. However, we definitely would love for you to participate in our course. Um, and all of the things that are on there on Cox campus. So please check it out. Yep. And also if we can go to slide 28 to keep the conversation going, um, we wanna keep this conversation going. So we would love to connect with you via our social media platforms. We are very active on Facebook. Cox Campus community on Twitter and LinkedIn. And just remember that this is just one of several sessions. We have a great year planned out to dive a little bit deeper in, into instructional coaching and also other content. And then we're gonna close out by letting you know that our next um, instructional coaching session on our next slide um, will be October the 11th. And it's gonna be, we're gonna be talking about we're discussing instructional coaching for a change in children's future. Um, and all coaches and prospective coaches are welcome to join us. And just wanna let you know that there will be a year long journey tomorrow um, entitled Safe and Responsive Climate, which digs deeper into those essential elements that we discussed earlier. So that will be tomorrow, Wednesday, August 17th from <coughs> 3 to 4 p.m. And we hope that you all can join us. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and we hope that you all have a great afternoon.